Welcome to the rocket profile of the Vanguard rocket, the Naval Research Lab's attempt to beat both the Soviets and von Braun to orbit. The Vanguard was less than half the mass of the Army Ballistic Missile Agency's Juno-1, von Braun's rocket, which would eventually launch Explorer-1, America's first satellite. Vanguard was also less than a twentieth the launch mass of the Sputnik rocket which launched the world's first satellite. It achieved this by the extreme miniaturization of the satellite and also the first use of a liquid stage that lit in mid-flight rather than on the ground. With the other rockets, there was uncertainty about whether lighting a liquid propellant engine in flight would work, so they avoided it. Vanguard's first stage was a single X405 engine burning kerosene and liquid oxygen to provide a vacuum thrust of 134.7 kN for 2 minutes and 25 seconds. At the surface, it had a tepid specific impulse of 248 seconds and in vacuum 270 seconds. The second stage was known as the Delta A stage or ABLE stage and it featured one AJ-10-37 generating 33.8 kN of unsymmetrical dimethyl hydrazine and inhibited white fuming nitric acid as propellants. It had a burn time of 1 minute and 55 seconds and a vacuum ISP of 271 seconds. Being the first air start liquid stage, it became quite the brand name in rocketry. The stage was the origin of the ABLE and DELTA stages developed for the THOR rocket, and the combination eventually just became known as the DELTA rocket. The AJ-10 engine eventually gained the ability to reignite, another first, and that led heavily modified versions of it to be used on Titan's trans stage, the Apollo service module, the Space Shuttle Orbital Maneuvering System, and eventually the Orion spacecraft's service module. In this way, the second stage of Vanguard has had a profound legacy, even as the rocket itself wasn't the first to launch a satellite either globally or for the United States. The final stage of the rocket was the Grand Central Company's GCR-X242, or later Allegheny Ballistic Lab's ABL-X248. This was a solid rocket motor that was spin-stabilized by the reaction control system on the Delta stage. The X242 solid motor provided 11.56 kN for 31 seconds at a specific impulse of 230 seconds in vacuum. Vanguard had three successes and eight failures for a dismal successful rate of 27.3%. Its first success was on March 17, 1958, five and a half months after Sputnik, with the 1.47 kg Vanguard 1 satellite. Vanguard 1 did have the distinction of being the first solar powered satellite as its tiny solar panel saved it from carrying more batteries, allowing it to be as light as it was. Vanguard 1 is also the oldest artificially launched object in orbit, and will probably remain in orbit for another 150 years at least, but communication with it was lost in 1964. The heaviest payload lofted to orbit by Vanguard was Vanguard 3, a 227 kilogram satellite which is also still in orbit. While it was far from a reliable launcher, famously dubbed Kaputnik after the failure of Vanguard TV-3, which rose 1.2 meters before exploding, Vanguard was still a remarkable design in the race to orbit. Not only did it have a long legacy thanks to the Delta stage, but it was also built specifically for the purpose of launching a satellite rather than being a converted ballistic missile. It was also the smallest successful orbital rocket until the Japanese Lambda 4S, which was in turn beaten by Japan's own SS-520. With that, thank you for watching this rocket profile of Vanguard.